All right, so let's move on. The next two fill in the blanks are going to be Orlando Magic Player History theme from our boy Jay at ORL Magic Player History. Yep. And he's been doing all off season, giving us that magic content that we need. Sure. We yeah, we've been talking about it all all off season. Yep. Um, it's definitely some good content. Everybody gets to vote. Right. I'm sticking up for the old guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun time, but it's coming down to the finals now of, right. of some of these, and uh, we thought it'd be a good opportunity to fill in the blank. Let's fill in the blank with who we think it is. All right. So <laughs> the power forwards. Yep. Um, the top. So. The final four for power forwards was Horace Grant, Terry Catledge, Bo Outlaw, and Richard Lewis. Sure. Peach. Yep. The number one Orlando Magic power forward is blank. I want to say Richard Lewis, but Richard Lewis start was basically one of the first stretch fours. Yes. This guy was one of the best three-point shooters in the league, and that was not something power forwards were doing. But he mm -hmm. could also go in and rebound and play inside, yes. which was kind of incredible. It probably should be him, and I think you think I'm going to say Terry Catledge because I'm going to yeah, go with, with that young kid's heart. Yeah, yeah. But no, I'm not doing that either. I'm going with Horace Grant because yeah. Horace Grant was a great player before. And he was also a great player when he came to our team. And he kind of took a team that was young, that was too soon for mm -hmm. them to be going places, and he made them legit. He gave them some veteran leadership and something on the court that went a little deeper than the stats may have shown. So for me, it's Horace Grant because I think he was a legendary player maybe before he even came to us. But then he really kind of made us a team that people took had to take seriously for a while and changed the culture of a team that was – back in a spot where we are now. He's the kind of guy I'd like to see come in next year when we have an off season, bring in a guy like that that can help propel us to that next level so that when people say, why not us, why not now, he's that guy saying, you're all good, young, talented players. I've done it before. Let's go do it. Uh, I, I got one with Horace Grant. Who do you think? He, he stole my argument, Pete. Ah, I didn't know. <laughs> he stole my argument, except I'm saying Richard Lewis. Okay. And it is interesting how these two players, two power forwards from different eras of Orlando Magic basketball really do have such a similar narrative. You know, they were the missing piece yep. that pushed us over the edge in the championship contention. Mm -hmm. Bringing over Richard Lewis, a guy that, man, he, he was dynamic as a player. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times when we saw him on the Magic, he was spotting up for threes. Because we had other guys, Turkaloo, Jameer handling the rock more. But remember, Jameer, I mean, no, I'm sorry, Rashard Lewis could take people off the dribble. Yep. He was really silky. When he would so get good. it in the post, he would face up on people. So, like, you know, drawing fouls, he was really good at that. Yep. Uh, he, I mean, he, he showed up when it mattered in the finals, even though yep. it didn't push us over. He had that, like, 34 point game. Yep. I mean, this was, he was a big time player in big time moments. Sure. It didn't shy away. I liked him also because. He was those types of guys that I look up to and admire in terms of speaks, speak quietly and carry a big stick. Exactly. He yeah. just handled Agreed. his business, he was did. a great player, and, and let his play do the talking. Right. And I just respect humans like that. Yeah, I mean, he was, some of his better years came with the Sonics as well yep. before he got there. Got, yeah. By the way, imagine him on that young Oklahoma City Thunder team that went to the finals. Yeah. If he'd have been there still, that could, he could have been a difference maker. But yeah, he was almost a little too laid back. Like he didn't get up in people's kit. He wasn't like doing cereal commercials and like people, he wasn't a household name, you know, but he definitely had that star power, but like a quiet star. So like I think he doesn't get the run as being like some all time great. But man, his, his bag was full. Yeah. And, and I, I put him over Horace just because of another point that you mentioned, again, stealing all my points over there, Peach. Mm -hmm. The fact that that Orlando Magic team was really on the forefront of what has become the modern NBA, the stretch four. Sure. He was kind of one of the first right. of those guys. We had another guy, Ryan Anderson, who was in yep. this as well, didn't make it as far in the poll. Right. But those ilk guys, those 6'9", six, 6'10", six, shooters right. who could punish you outside, but he could also come off the dribble. Right. So that's that, why. That whole Orlando team really started that whole. Yeah. We got one guy inside rebounding, and he can mm -hmm. score in there when he wants. And if you decide to try to shut him down, he'll throw it out to the open <laughs> three-point shooter. And, and everybody else. Anyone, anyone is going to make it, man. <laughs> oh. And now we're, our squad – 
these days, like, we're just dying for shooting. We need... Right. And that's why Devin can't... No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go back. Don't, Don't go back. back. By the way, Only I think I've got a new moniker. I'm going to call okay. it the Point Stealer. I'm thinking about it. Okay. All right. It's good for you. We'll see. We could see. We could put on a yeah. shirt or something. That might work. Thank you.